Hello, this is Dr. Rare British Shaler, the Relationship Help Doctor, and I'm glad that you're with me today. We're going to talk about something I haven't spoken about a lot, and that's the idea of people being passive aggressive. And we throw that term around a lot. Sometimes we understand it, sometimes people don't. And what we're really looking at when we look at passive aggressive behavior is behavior that someone has an, an unwillingness to come forward when they don't agree with you. But instead of saying that they don't agree with you or they're not going to go along with the plan, they don't want to have the difficulty then. So they wait until the actual event or the thing that they're supposed to be doing, they don't do it. And then when you come to them and you say, well, I thought you were going to do this, then they tell you that you expect too much. I've written a lot about this. You can download my ebook, How to how to Stop Playing the Passive Aggressive Game. The ebook is called Stop, That's Crazy Making, How to Stop Playing the Passive Aggressive Game. So I wanted to share with you five things that might be happening in your relationship with anyone, your parent, your ex, your partner, your child, a coworker, a friend, that lets us know that someone has a passive aggressive side and that it's showing. So if you're hearing these five things I'm going to talk about today, then there's a real reason why they drive you nuts. If you never work with someone who uses them frequently, you'll now realize that it's the sneaky anger, the sneaky anger of passive aggressive behavior that is pushing you over the edge. You could be going along thinking everything is fine and that everything is swimming, you know, everything is good, everybody's happy. And then one sentence turned upside down and your ride on the emotional roller coaster begins again. It catches you by surprise and you often can't quite grasp what it is that's pushing your buttons. So what I have to say to you today should help. So I mentioned sneaky anger. Well, that's the way it escapes initially. Little looks, offhanded comments, rolling of the eyes, and that, who do I say to that? What do I say to that? Well, how can I possibly respond to that question that catches you off guard and maybe makes you a little defensive in the process? So passive aggressive people want to keep you guessing. And why? Because they want to be in control. So you're left with some questions. Did she or he really mean that? Were they intending to be hurtful or malicious? If I comment on it, will he or she tell me it's a joke? If I say it hurt me, will he or she tell me I have thin skin? Or am I willing to take the risk of saying how I feel? Because I don't know what's going to happen here. Or is it like walking into a web, like a fly beckoned by a spider? It's risky business, that's for sure. And you've been there if you know anything about what I'm talking about. You don't know whether to speak up or let it lie or be angry or go along with a supposed joke while you're inwardly seething. So here are five potentially passive aggressive things that people say too frequently. And maybe you will now hear this in a new light as I say them to you. And you'll begin to recognize that that uneasy feeling you're having is coming from their passive aggressive approach. So number one thing, yes, I'll do that. Okay, on the surface, that sounds like a great answer. The answer you want, right? Problem is that after saying it, the person doesn't do anything. And when you ask why nothing got done, he or she tells you, well, you had no right to ask for me to do that in the beginning. Or the far too habitual and totally infuriating response, oh, I forgot. Familiar? Okay, number two. Things passive aggressive people say too frequently. You ask too much. The person agrees to do something you've asked, but only puts in the minimal token, hard won effort. And she or he knew exactly what you wanted, but gave you the 
barest minimum just to be able to say it got done. It's a kind of catch-22 that drives you up the wall, doesn't it? Because you know what's going on. You know that they don't want to be caught out saying they didn't do it, but they have absolutely no intention of putting any effort into it all. So number three, I know you've done what you could with what you had to work with. Ouch. That is the ultimate backhanded undermining comment served up in a way that could be taken several ways. You're sure that what she or he meant to say was, well, for your lack of skills or insight or talent or background, I couldn't have expected anything more from you, you worm. (laughs) However, he or she kind of hedges the bet. So you're damned if you do and damned if you don't respond. And then if you respond with the incredulity that it actually asks for by in your head, at least, or if you're brave saying out loud, are you saying I don't know what I'm doing? A passive aggressive person will meet that with, I never said anything of the sort. Are you insecure about your abilities? Wham, you got it again. Not only did the job only get half done, There was a token effort put in, but now all of a sudden you're getting taken down, shot down, and cut down for simply asking the question about what's going on. Okay, that's three. (laughs) Are they sounding familiar at all? So number four, and you know I'm laughing, but it's not funny. It's, It's the humor of, can you believe this? I mean, really, that people behave these ways and that we get used to these behaviors. And that's unfortunate, too. So don't think I'm laughing because I think it's funny. I'm not. I'm laughing because it's very uncomfortable. So number four. Oh, I thought we put you in the loop. Well, there you go. Fraught with potential minefields. If you ask for further information, you demonstrate you're not quote unquote, in the loop, and you affirm that you're not part of the inside group, or maybe even worse, that you've been purposefully left out. And passive aggressive people, they just want to rip off your arm and hit you with the wet end. And while they're doing it, they're making it all your fault. And that may sound familiar to you too. And that's what's happening here. The best thing is to ignore the remark. It's a no-win situation best left, really. I know that you'd like to say something, but it can't go anywhere good. So it's just as well to just observe the behavior, note it, and say nothing. And then the last one is the one that is just frosts you right off. (laughs) A passive aggressive person will frequently say, oh, I was just joking. And there you are. You don't know what to believe. You feel hurt, Yet she or he has just dismissed the possibility that that's the message you were meant to get. And then if you take it as a joke, you're accepting the put down and he or she gets away with it. That's the ultimate gotcha. And you know, I write a lot about the gotchas in my book, Escaping the Hijackal Trap, the truth about hijackals and while they're crazy making. And remember, you can go to Amazon and get that book, Escaping the Hijackal Trap. Because if any of these things are sounding familiar, you've got a whole lot of things you need to know, and they're in that book. So this, I was only joking line. This is usually what you hear after a sarcastic remark has been tossed your way. And again, this is that sneaky anger I spoke of. It's so often used by passive aggressive people when they're in a group because they feel insulated by the group. They're betting that you won't display your possible insecurities or even your healthy anger by speaking up. So they blindside you with a remark. And if these are sounding all too familiar, know that you've been rightly picking up the underlying negative intent. It's common to want to give people the benefit of the doubt, though. Good ideas in most cases. However, If it's a pattern that you experience with that same person repeatedly, start thinking in terms of passive-aggressive behavior. 
Now you know what it actually is that's driving you nuts. Now you can take steps to change your part in the interactions with this person. Learn new strategies to respond in assertive, healthy ways and stop the crazy making. And again, remember that's the title of the book. If this is all sounding familiar and you're not ready to read Escaping the Hijackle Trap, read Stop That's Crazy Making, How to Quit Playing the Passive Aggressive Game because you do have to do something and you need to make a change. So I look forward to you making those changes because I love to hear from you. Let me know what you did and tell me how it worked for you. Visit my website at 4 Relationship Help or my YouTube channel by the same name. Talk soon.